In this video, we're going to take a very quick look at how to access the Preferences panel in Affinity Designer for iPad. It's part of the Affinity Designer for Beginners um, series that I'm doing. So open Affinity Designer on your iPad and you can see the screen behind the text here. There's a plus sign, a question mark and a gear wheel. So to access the Preferences panel, we need to tap on the gear wheel. A new window will be displayed and there are several options that are helpful when creating a project. But the first thing we need that comes up is the general window and you can see there the ones I've got ticked to on, they're a blue dot when they're on and a white dot when they're off. Um, the undo limit and the auto save interval, you can see they're just the defaults and I've left them at that. The language is the default that you're using on your system and the default save location, I've set that to iCloud Drive, which is of course what I use because Apple Photos, I'm on a Mac and everything runs on it. It means I can work anywhere because I'm on the road a lot, so with all my work on iCloud, it doesn't matter where I am. Um, I can access my work, whether I'm in Spain or Australia or England, I can, I can access it. Now, automatically update help is on because I want the help files, if they're ever changed, to automatically update. Automatically lock background layer on import. So if you import a photo, it will automatically lock that layer when you start the thing up. So you can't change your original. You'll see import PSD text as text, not a pixel layer. Now, I very rarely import PSD files. Um, and they come from Photoshop and its, and its family, Adobe, the Adobe family. I do import some, but mostly only to look at. And if I do import them, I'm not worried about a PSD file containing text um, because it's just too easily changeable. So I just leave that off. Refine the HEIC depth maps. Now that's referring to colour. A lot of Apple images these days, particularly on iPhone and iPad, are in the HEIC format. Mm, and I, I've put that on uh, as experimentally, actually. Show tutorials and snapshots. That's what first comes up on your screen when you first start up. But I've switched that off because I don't really need it. Dither gradients. That means your gradients don't come up in lines or in bands. Dithering means you get a nice smooth gradient. Show touches, that's when you touch the screen, you get a little blue dot under your finger or Apple Pencil, you'll see that shows up while you're holding your finger on the screen, for example. If that's off, you don't get that. Now I've got cache screen updates, uses, which uses more memory, but I've got plenty of memory on my iPad. So they're the, the ones that are on I've got there, speed up or make my work smoother and I don't have to worry about things being on or off. Now the next one I've got if you have the general tab options the only possible exception you might want to change as I've just mentioned is the default save location. You might have Dropbox or OneDrive or, your, or just on your iPad if that's all you want. Now the interface options is the next one. This one is really quite important. The show the undo and redo buttons is an important option as I mentioned there. On your main interface, if that is switched on, down the bottom right hand side you'll see a, a, a triangular arrow pointing one way and a triangular arrow pointing the other way. That's undo and redo. If you're wondering if you accidentally delete something, how do you get it back? Use those two buttons, undo and redo. They're very, very useful. Automatically hide the user interface is also on. Now, if you've got a keyboard or something like that on the screen, tap somewhere else on the screen and the keyboard will go away. The rest of them I've never worried about putting on because I've never had a need for them. But be aware they're there if you need them. Fonts are an important addition. Now, if you touch the cloud there, 
you can install fonts, so I believe, from the iCloud, from the cloud. So if you've got fonts sitting on a computer somewhere, you can go and find them and install them from there. Now, shortcuts are on there, and as far as I can make out, they only apply if you have a keyboard attached to your iPad. Um, so I've never really figured out whether they work or not, because if you've got the keyboard up on your iPad and you press the letter T, for example, the Art Text Tool shortcut there, if you press the letter T, you'll get, a, you'll get the letter T on your interface. So I don't know. I'll experiment with those, or you can experiment with those. You may, lock, may like them, you may not. On an iPad, really not important, I don't think. When you've completed all your wandering through the preferences panes, just complete, tap done, and you'll be taken back to your startup interface. Thank you for watching and subscribing, and I hope you do. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can find it there at that address or if you're looking at this on YouTube and you probably are just click on subscribe and the like button right here on the channel. Thank you for watching.